Nick. And we are Envy Board Gaming. And today we're looking at Lorenzo Il Magnifico. This is a two to four player game. It is designed by Virginio Gigli, Felamina Brassini, and also Simone Luciani. It is uh, published by Simon or Come On Games. Nick is going to give a brief overview of how you play, and then we're going to give our review. All right, we're here set up for a two player game of Lorenzo Il Magnifico. In this game, we have four workers each. So the red player has the same workers as the green player here. You're gonna see different colors here, these stickers. There's the white die, the um, orange die, and the black die. And there's also a neutral one of your color. And that corresponds to these dice right here. So each of these ties in to the color dice represented. So the first thing we're gonna do First player is going to roll, and we're going to assign these to the proper color at the bottom of the board. And then you go ahead and take these workers back here. And you're going to assign workers, and your, all your workers have these values on them. So you notice on the board, there are different dice placements here, and that's what die is required, that or higher. So if I wanted to put a worker here, I need at least a one. So I could not put this die here because this always represents a zero it is a neutral die there is nothing out here it's always a zero so the way you make this a have a value is you add assistance you start the game with three of these servants they're called and you have to spend one for every one you need to increase a value of so that zero i can place as a one if i spend this servant to the pool and now this value is a one so i can put it on these one valued spots on the board so let's say I wanted a card. Let's take a look at a card. I'm gonna assign this as a one because I spent the servant. And I can take this because there's no additional cost here. This is where additional costs are gonna be on these other cards. It's saying when I do this action, as long as I have at least a one value on it, I will trigger off a coin. So I'm gonna add this to my board. And I'll take a let you look at a little closer at the board here. We're gonna ignore this side piece for a moment. You are gonna place the green ones on this green. It shows you right here what cards go where. So when I get a green card right there, I'm gonna have it placed here. And I can do that for free up until this spot where I need a certain amount of strength or defense. So I don't have any right now, but that's no problem because it's the first card I have. So why are you getting these cards? It's because we have this sideboard out here, and there are double sides. There's a standard and an advanced, but there's no real difference. Um, just go with the advanced because it will change it up a little bit. There are four different ones, double-sided. So this one I picked out, and when I do this action, which is an action on the board at the bottom left, I trigger off this and any cards that have that. As long as the value I put here at least matches or exceed, um, exceeds the value needed. So in this case, it'd be easy because all I need is a one and I can trigger off all these and the card. Now, most of them have a higher value, like a five or a six. So these two up here have a five or a six. They will only trigger off if I put at least a five on the spot of, the, of this action here. So if I, in this case, if I put a one in that action, I would only trigger off this stuff and any other cards that are one. But if I put a five, I'm gonna trigger off this and this. Okay? So that is those the green buildings. The yellow buildings is a similar concept that you're gonna trigger off. You can see that it'll trigger off with a one production, and that will be these yellow buildings. And you can see on the yellow ones, this has a cost. So two stone and one um, coin. This is an immediate, so you can see there's a lightning bolt right there. In most games, that means immediately. Same in this game, you're going to get two victory points. That's a symbol for victory points. And then when you do a production of at least a three at the production spot right here at the bottom left as well, you will have optionally, you can spend an ore to get three coins or two ore to get five coins. And that will go in your yellow area of the board right here. And you can see there's six spots for all that. On your board, there's six spots here, and there's six spots here. You're gonna get victory points into the game if you reach a certain amount in this um, in this spot, because yellows are more powerful. So you're already getting victory points for yellows. And a lot of them are a lot more um, than just two. You can see uh, massive amounts of points for those sometimes. Also to the board, on the board you have a spot off the side of your board for blue cards and purple cards. 
You have spots for resources. So this is where your coins go. This is where wood goes. This is where stone goes. This is where servants go. Blue gives you points. You can see that measure right here. How many ever you have of blue and then how many victory points you have to match. Um, we are going to look at the other cards here. So hypothetically, I assign my guy here. Let's say my opponent wants a green as well. No problem. They can take one of these other greens and it will cost them $3 just for the fact that I am already in that tower. So there's four levels for all these towers. So if they want to go here, no problem. They have to spend $3 right away and they can do that as long as, let's see, that matches. Yes. Yeah, so the value is three. I place an orange three. This requires a three. No problem. I got to spend $3. The green player does $3 to the supply three and they can go ahead and take that because they're again in greens, there are no costs. So they'll get an immediate two stone and then that'll add to this. If they do that action with a four or better, they'll get two stone as well. So they add that to their green area. That goes with that. Everything else is just going to say what the cost is here. There's not going to be a cost. Some of them are the higher up. So we have a five spot and a seven spot. Obviously, you cannot hit a seven unless you have uh, some card that adds two, like this one here. Adds two to all your green purchases. So that then you just need a five, and you can put a five on the seven spot up there, and then that would be fine. Um, or you spend servants. Like I said, you can spend servants to reach a seven. You can doesn't matter. You can get servants pretty quick. You can just spend an action right here and get five of them or five coins. So that's pretty easy. So um, the blue, the blue ones give you, you can see it, there's always a coin cost with blue. That's all the blues cost coins. And it will just give you different, um, different things. So let's say I wanted to build a yellow. Well, it's adding two to my yellow. Plus I can spend one less wood or stone. Just little ongoing abilities. That one didn't have any um, immediate. This one gives me that defense. And that defense correlates with the prerequisites for putting cards out here. So that helps with that. You'll also get five points if you were the leader in this defensive category at the end of the game. Second place will get two points. Purple here, another cost. You're get st it costs stone to go here. And you are going to get some immediate rewards. This diploma you'll see scattered throughout. That means you'll get any of these. It's labeled on the board. You might get resources or might get more servants or coins. Faith. We'll get into faith in a moment. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to do this until you, all your workers are assigned. Then at the end of the second, fourth, and sixth round, because there's six rounds in this game, we're going to check the faith track in the first set which would be that after this end of the second round we're going to look at this one so as long as you reach this spot of three faith you're good let's say the board was like this this green one's fine they've passed this requirement they did not so green doesn't have to worry about anything they're gonna get their four victory points and they're gonna reset Red, however, did not match, so they're going to place one of their red cubes on this, and they're going to suffer a negative impact for the rest of the game. Now, every time they do this action with the axe, they are going to be treating their dice as three lower. And if you recall, that would be a problem trying to trigger off different things. Now they would need a seven-value die just to trigger off this four value. So for the rest of the game, that's going to impact them. And there's going to be different ones out here. This one, ne negative impact on buying these blue buildings right here. And the end of the game would be negative impact on your victory points. For now, all your all the yellow buildings out here, they're going to uh, lose victory points for everything that requires a resource. So for, for every resource that requires, you get negative victory points. So that could be pretty bad if you have a lot of yellow. You're going to want to go ahead and make sure you make it to that spot. And you're going to be playing all these rounds. So these after you redo, if you do all your workers, both players or all the players that are playing, this will replenish with up here. And you'll know when you're triggering off the next um, count, the next phase right here for the Vatican, you're going to see a new number is going to appear. So that's when you know, okay, now I triggered off that. So it won't be this round, but it will be, <clears throat> it will be after the next round. Again, all the even, uh, even rounds trigger that. Um, victory points in this game, like I said, you're going to get victory points for the green buildings. You're going to get victory points for the blue buildings. Victory points for every five resources. 
You get victory points for these purple cards. Um, you're also going to get things throughout the game that give you victory points often. And I could be missing something, but that's the general gist of the game. You're gonna see, obviously, whoever has the most points is going to win. I'll mention this up front as well. If you play an advanced game, which I recommend you do, you were going to get four cards each of these leaders. And um, if you ever match these these requisites right here, you're going to get this bonus. And you can play that as just a bonus action. It's not a whole action. So if you ever have 10 wood, you can go ahead and get one defense and one victory point, for instance. And you're going to have four of these. You usually draft them. You just deal out four, pick one, pass the rest to your opponent. And so you have four in your hand. And that's how you play. Hey, we're back for a review. Uh, Lorenzo Il Magnifico. Bunch of Italian designers, an Italian theme, uh, historic theme. This one um, is obviously a Euro. You saw it on the table. That's a Euro through and through. You see the board. It reminds us of Newton because obviously the designing team. So um, that's going to be a, probably a plus going into it. We're, if we know that going into it, we're happy because we really do enjoy Newton. Um, let's say the... Let's do the cons this time. Cons. The look, okay, we know it's Euro. It's heavy Euro. Or you know what? The game's not heavy. I'll say that. If the game's not heavy, it's a medium weight game. But it's a it's a Euro. It looks like it could be heavy, but then you see that you know, it's a little more spaced out than some of the other Euro games. So you can see there's not a terrible amount of things going on. You have four um, towers here to pick from. Mm -hmm. You have just a few action spots at the bottom, and they're pretty straightforward. They show a symbol of coins, they yeah. show a symbol of servants. Or a production symbol, so you know where you're looking. Or what? What? I wonder what the action is called with the axe. I can't remember what that actually production? it's called. I thought that was a gear. Or oh, harvest. Harvest. Yeah, okay. It's a harvest action. Okay. So you see that symbol. You know where you're looking for that. You know what everything does. You see the victory points over top. So everything is nicely laid out. Um, there's a lot of little helpful tips, tips here and there. Like it'll show the servant is a plus one on your die. Everything is trying to help you out. You know, um, the servant mechanism is great. I like that. A lot of a lot of games use that. Um, I mean, Feld, Feld use that all the time mm -hmm. where you get an object and then you spend that object to increase your Modify die. Modify it, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, something got my eye. Augment it. Yeah. Um, so that's a common mechanism. I like that. I like when I can just not roll and um, go ahead and fix the die. Um, I like how I have a ton of options. Obviously, I don't want to... I, I would probably rather rush the buildings in order to go ahead and take those instead of spending $3 when my opponent gets to them. So that might be where I want to go. Mm -hmm. You can't always do that. Sometimes you need more money, you need more resources. You can do all these other things though. So there's a lot of options here. Um, negatives, I feel like it might not be balanced. Some of the cards you have, they don't feel as balanced as Newton, where um, the cards at the end of the game when you play the advanced mm -hmm. mode, I feel like there's some that are like, yeah, who cares? I mean, I had one that was one victory point and uh, two defense. And I was like, I need to do all this for one victory point to defense because last time I scored 108. So uh, I can't really, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really uh, too excited about some of them. And some of them are pretty good. I can do a whole uh, production action, which could be fantastic. I could have a ton of production. I could That just could trigger off six cards. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah, I had one that let me skip the $3 fee. So for little, going to a place like a tower whole game. that somebody else, yeah, the whole game. Yeah, I mean, that that's huge. Mm -hmm. So those don't feel balanced. I'm not sure um, what the logic was there. It's almost like, are we playing this wrong? But they're ongoing. It's not. There's no lightning bolt there. Like it says one time use. It's just I can use those. So some of them are really powerful. Others aren't. Um, and I feel like to win, you're probably going to have to diversify a little bit. It's not where I can just stack up on greens and get 20 victory points and hope to win. I'm going to need, I'm gonna need yellows, okay? I'm going to need yellows. If I don't have yellows... Ugh. Mm -hmm. Because the purples aren't going to make up for it. The purple buildings, they're they're usually like four or five victory points, and you're hitting ten bombs on the yellow, and mm -hmm. and you're not getting any other bonuses. It's not like if you have a certain amount of purple, you're getting more bonuses. The blues you are, the greens you are, the yellows you're not because they're already so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and they add to production too. The yellows add to production as yeah. well. So the yellows are fantastic. I tried a game just to make sure. I tried my last game, didn't take a yellow at all, and I lost. Bad. Bad. <laughs> so, and the first game, I did yellow, I did everything, and I and I won. So I felt like, okay, well, I probably need yellows to compete. If my opponent's doing yellows too, then it's kind of, kind of rough, because Vic had full, she had all six yeah. yellows. So I tried I, to have more, but like, he said, yeah. no, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> the rules, I guess, Stop, six. six. <laughs> Mercy. Um, so uh, balancing issues are there. The game is super fun, though. Once you understand, okay, well, I guess I got to do this, okay? 
I don't like that aspect of it, but the game is still fun. I'm still giving it a good score. I'm giving it an 8-4. It's the same score I gave Newton. I'm pretty sure I gave it 8-4, and Vic gave it an 8-7 mm -hmm. on that game. So let's see. What does Vic have to say? <clears throat> well, a lot of what you said, you took a lot of things I would like to say. Um, I liked that the game has different ways that you can modify. You can go to different spots, get, boom, five servants down at the bottom just for one. Like if you could just find a way to... But at the same time, it is disappointing if you can't get that one servant, then you have one um, pawn, one worker that you don't get to use because its value is zero. So there are times when at least three times in the two games we played, I didn't have an extra action. So Nick got the benefit. So it's something that you want to be sure that you have at least one servant so you can augment that uh, worker. <clears throat> um, but it's not a huge deal. It's not like it... it destroys the game if you can't use that but it is always nice to be able to have a way to get first player so it's not always the same person who's first player and you don't trade off first player there's a benefit to going to a spot to be the first player and it's nice to have the first choice i had the first choice the last game we played the whole game so that was good and i like um that there is a military requirement for you to lay out those uh green cards mm -hmm. but i had a leader that allowed me to play without having a, a military and the military track doesn't score you that high to go up there. You get five VP for being the number one. So if you could get that leader that you don't have to work, focus on military at all, it, it's just interesting because you can you can mitigate that or, or you choose to shift your focus, try different strategies like Nick mentioned where he tried to go without a yellow uh, card the whole game, a building card. Um, so I like that. I like that you uh, have to consider if your opponent has already gone there and you have to pay the $3 cost if you want to go to that tower as well. The punishments from the church are interesting too because that's another consideration you have to make when you uh, make a choice. Like, do you want to care about being punished by the church? Do you want to focus your attention on increasing your faith? Because some of the punishments, eh, they're, they're okay. They're manageable. But some, ooh, ouch. Yeah. They hurt, <laughs> especially when you're at the mercy of the dice being rolled. And for some reason, I kept rolling really high dice. So we were getting sixes and fives to work with. But there are games that we've had much lower dice. It wasn't always sixes and fives. Um, so the minus four or minus three on those dice, ee, ah, <laughs> it could be hard. Yeah. And then you got to focus on getting servants to mitigate it. So I, I almost always want to now go for... Um, uh, having a high faith because I just don't want to deal with the ouch the punishment getting whipped by the church yeah and that last one we played um there was the last negative one for the church was to not score or basically our yellows they're going to subtract victory points for every resource mm -hmm. used in them so I didn't go for yellows so I didn't care about that that was kind of my plan from the beginning I said okay well I guess I won't go for it and just see how it played out and it didn't work out well so maybe now in every future game i'd say you know what i gotta focus on faith some because i don't want to take the punishment and i need you get victory points too so it's not that bad if you get really far up there i think it goes to 30. so yeah, if you max out 20, one of those two i'm pretty sure it's 30. um if you max out on your faith track and you come back you get 30. Mm -hmm. so that's so my doing. score altogether very similar to nick's i gave it an 8.2 um really enjoy the game uh i think that you should try it out um, I would buy it. I would get it if it's a good price. Um, you know, if you like the heavy, not even heavy, I keep saying that, it's not a heavy game. If you like Euro games, you'll like it. Um, because it's not too crazy. It's not, I mean, when we play Brassai, there's so many places to go. I feel like it's, it's so convoluted with like so many spots. If I had to contrast it to another one that doesn't look as like visually popping. Mm. Uh, the Brassai, I feel like there's so many things going on. Whereas this one is so straightforward, like the iconography, like everything is just kind of, um, laid out. So if you want to have maybe an introduction to a Euro game, I would say this would be your step to move up to a medium game. I think that this would be a good one to take you to the heavier games after you play this one, because I think uh, it, it serves its purpose in that regard. Um, fun, you know, historically significant as well. It, it, all of the leaders have, you know, if you're interested in looking up on wikipedia oh what did that guy do or who is this person it, it is kind of the renaissance um characters the renaissance personality so yeah play with those for sure the advanced ones yeah just play with them it, it, since it's so it's not complex at all to add mm -hmm. those I mean, why wouldn't you yeah. just do it i mean even if they're not that balanced it's still it's something to aim for in your draft so if you don't like that one then give it to your partner yeah so we only played it at two players uh yes. if you played it with more players let us know in the comments below 
uh, how you enjoyed it at a higher player count because we only had the chance to play it with two. We, I don't know if we would bust it out maybe with four. We have so many games that we can play with people. It's <laughs> always a trouble with us to bu to bust out these type of things that look dry because um, maybe our friends don't want to play a dry Europe. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little questionable sometimes when we have these type of games, but we know we like them, so we can play yeah. with two. So with two, if you've got you know just one person and you're staying in, uh, then it's for sure something that you should get if you want something a little more challenging, a little more thinky. We always, you know, enjoy games that give us lots of decisions, interesting choices to make. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe to our channel, please, if you haven't already. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.